Hi friends. Lynn and I have to leave our beautiful home in Ajijic, Mexico. Because we've accepted a rental contract for several months and next week we are flying to Tucson, Arizona where we have our motorhome stored and get in it and travel to Oregon and back down through California back to Arizona for a few months. We really enjoy the RV lifestyle and um, uh, you can go back and take a look at some of my older videos if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen our motorhome. We enjoy it a lot and um, we always feel like when we're in the motorhome that we can't wait to get back to our beautiful home in Mexico. And frankly, when we're here in Mexico, it's always we're anticipating getting back to the motorhome to do that. So we had the best of both worlds in that regard. Oh, I made another video when I got out of the shower the other day that I'm going to insert right here. It's about um, uh, going on our trip and a problem that I have. And then I'm going to come back and I got a question or a comment on my channel and it was one of those that had so many very good questions in it that I didn't want to type it all so I thought well I'll just make a video about it. I am a very fast typist because I've been a piano player uh, since I was very young. I was the fastest typist in my high school class by far got limber piano fingers. Anyway, I just didn't want to type all of the answers to this, and if I answer one person's comment on my channel, well, that person, maybe a few others read it, but if I make a, a, a video and answer the questions, then many of you get answers to those questions. Take a look at this other thing. I'll be back in a minute. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Hi there. I just got out of the shower and in the shower I was thinking about, well, what's going to be on my mind today? And uh, quite often in my morning shower I think about, well, do I want to sit down in front of my camera and uh, talk to my YouTube friends uh, today? And if so, what would it be about? Well, here's what's on my mind today in the shower. So what I'm thinking about is, well, you know, I need to start thinking about how I'm going to prepare the subscribers who've come along because they want to know about retiring and living in Mexico. Uh, and now I'm going to go to the States and live in a motorhome. I'm not going to forget what I know about retiring and living in Mexico just because I'm not in Mexico. I will continue to make videos about that. And I have some plans to make some videos about some other things that seem to have struck a chord on my channel. Uh, my channel's been growing exponentially, and I couldn't be happier about that. So here's another thank you for all of you who have subscribed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, one of the problems when we go to the motorhome is that I have a Verizon SIM card in my iPhone that I use as a hotspot but I don't have an unlimited internet plan. And there's a couple of reasons that I don't have an unlimited internet plan in the United States. Um, one of them is that it's expensive for mobile internet. I, um, I could probably afford it, but that's not the point. The point is that it's just, it's one of those things that gets my goat. Um, I come and I go and my Verizon SIM card sits in a drawer here in Mexico for five, six months at a time. And to get an unlimited upgrade on my plan, it just doesn't make any sense. Plus, like I said, it gets my goat. Uh, seven or eight years ago, I had a friend who was living in Russia and he was getting a hundred meg down for ten bucks a month. This is not a Russian collusion. <laughs> These are not the droids you're looking for. Anyway, um, that's why I don't have an unlimited plan and, and I will have to cut back a little bit on my uh, video uploads and my 
answering comments, which I thoroughly enjoy doing. Um, not a lot, but a little. If any of you have an unlimited internet plan in the United States that you would like to share, I would be open to a proposal. So, here's the uh, comment and the questions that I thought I might enjoy answering in a video rather than typing. Uh, I enjoy your approach to videos and I would like to learn more about expat life in Mexico. Whenever I watch videos of living in Mexico, I see wonderful images of people walking, visiting, eating, shopping, dancing, and other social activities. What about the daily necessities of life? Well, I think the daily necessities of life are walking, visiting, eating, shopping, dancing, and other social activities. Uh, you can have as much social activity in Ajijic, Mexico as you can stand. I know people who didn't need a day timer until they retired and moved to Ajijic, Mexico, and now they need a digital calendar to keep up with their daily schedules um, because they are so busy in their social life. When Lynn and I were first down here, we used to say, oh, you could go down to the plaza and meet a new friend every day. And that, wasn't a, that was not an exaggeration. You could meet more than one new friend every day. People are very friendly here, and um, the retired community um, is pretty laid back and relaxed and um, not in a hurry. Of course, there are exceptions, and there are people who are here uh, who haven't been here for long that kind of bring that uh, hectic, stressful personality with them. And it takes a while to, for them to work it out, but if you've been here for any length of time, um, you learn that manana doesn't mean tomorrow. It means not now. Uh, my question is, what happens when expats go to their home or apartment? Well, I'm not sure I understand that question, but when we come home to our apartment, uh, we cook, we watch TV, we have friends over and play cards, um, we garden, I work on my cars, I work on my videos, we swim, we get up and remind ourselves to appreciate the wonderful, beautiful place that we have. Well, that's what we do when we come home. Um, you can have a great, busy social life here, or you can come home and just, you know, do your thing. And if you're an introvert, just not see anybody. Uh, I don't know if that answered that question. I was kind of puzzled by that question. What about getting a haircut or a new hairdo? Lynn went and got her haircut the other day. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you haven't seen it yet. It's about this height. We, uh, we used to call that a, a bridge bob because we went on the boat and we had a flying bridge and it was easier to take care of because it was blowing in the wind on the bridge. Anyway, she went and got a bridge bob. I, I thought I needed to explain that word, bridge bob, because you wouldn't get it unless you're a boater. We're not boaters anymore, we're motor homers. Oh, we're talking about, oh, she went and got her hair cut and it was like less than 200 pesos. I don't know how much it was, but I know it was less than 200 pesos because I gave her 200 and she didn't give me any change. And uh, I guess so that might have included a tip. Um, and a, oh, and a, uh, a haircut. There are lots of barber shops in Ajijic, and I don't know anything about them because I've cut my own hair since I was 17 years old. I made another video about that one day. Um, how do you get your finery? How, 
How do you get your finery dry cleaned? I only have one piece of finery. It's a silk suit, and I only plan on wearing it one more time. And that will be in a coffin. <laughs> I saved it just for that. Otherwise, I'm kind of partial to t-shirts and shorts. Uh, there's a dry cleaner right up the street. You take your finery, I guess, to the dry cleaners is how you do that. Are there coin-operated laundromats or do you need to take your laundry to a laundry business? When we were first down here, we rented a house that didn't have a washer dryer in it and we just took our laundry about a block and a half away to a lady who does laundry. That's what she does. And it was many years ago and I don't remember what she charged, but it was basically nothing. Um, so. I guess if you don't have access to a washer dryer, that's how you would do it. Um, I don't think there is a coin operated laundromat. I know there isn't one in Ahihi. There might be one in Chapala, but I don't, I'm not aware of it. But why would you want to go and do it yourself if somebody would do it a really good job for you? For very little, probably less money than it would cost you for the soap in the United States. Um, what happens if you get a traffic ticket? Are the police friendly? Yes, the police are friendly. And uh, the local um, police here in uh, Ahihik and Chapala, they're very friendly. And once you've been here for a while and they recognize your vehicle um, and you, they're even more friendly. Um, there's one cop who invites people. He, he makes up a flyer and around Christmas time he passes out flyers while he's directing traffic, inviting you to his Christmas party. That's how friendly he is. Um, what happens if you get a ticket? If you get a ticket, um, and you won't get a ticket unless you beg for it, because they're not going to waste their time writing you a ticket unless you just say, give me the ticket. If you're new in town, they might ask you to um, give them some money at the traffic stop. And uh, we try to discourage that. Um, it's called mordida. And the literal translation of the Spanish word mordida is the little bite. And the local cops do occasionally think that you're going to get the little bite out of your wallet. Um, those of us who have been here for any length of time and enjoy living in Mexico uh, don't do that. And the reason we don't do that is because we're trying to discourage it. And I'm not talking about us as expats. I'm talking about the country of Mexico is trying to discourage it. Um, there are all kinds of excuses for doing it. It's actually a rather convenient system. Years ago, I used to do it all the time because I would rather just, you know, give them 100 pesos than go to the trouble of going over to Chapala and paying the ticket. But I don't do it anymore. And so what happens if I am stopped? And, I, and I've been stopped, and rightly so. Uh, I just tell them, give me the ticket, give me the ticket. And um, sometimes they have, and... Most often they say, I'm going to give you two tickets next time. Um, they are very friendly, and there's none of that. I don't know. I'm trying to be careful not to speak negatively about the United States, but um, in my years of living and being an aggressive driver in the United States, I've been stopped by the police there many times too, and there's always this attitude like, I'm the boss and you need to pay attention to me or whatever it is about cops in the United States. The cops in Mexico are, don't seem to have that attitude. Anyway, are the cops friendly? Yeah, the cops are friendly. So if you get a ticket, you go to Chapala and there's a place to pay the ticket. And if you pay within five days, it's half price. And it's not that much anyway. Um, this is old information, but the price of um, the price of uh, failure to
produce a valid driver's license was one minimum wage, which is like 100 pesos a day, which is six bucks. And if you pay it in five days, it's half price. So it would be three dollars to not have a driver's license or, um, you know, a traffic infraction like not stopping at a stop sign or something like that. There are some that are expensive, like um, uh, driving under the influence can be extremely expensive. Not wearing a seatbelt is 600 to 1200 pesos. Um, I just got one of those about a month ago. Jesus was with me. And um, as we approached this traffic stop, there was a, they were stopping cars checking for their inspection sticker. Uh, we have to get uh, emissions tests here once a year. So, and mine was expired. Anyway, they stopped me and he was going to give me a ticket for that. And then he noticed that Jesus, as we approached them, uh, had just took his, took his seat belt and just he was holding it like that. He didn't buckle it in. And the guy said, I'll give you your choice. You can either get a ticket for uh, no seat belt and you can pay that in Chapala, but if I give you a ticket for no inspection sticker, you're going to have to go in and get the inspection sticker, and then you're also going to have to go to Guadalajara to pay the ticket. So which do you want? Give us a ticket for not having a seat belt. And it was uh, 450 pesos. Um, and of course I paid it within five days, so it was only half of that. Uh, what's the next question we've got here? Uh, I have watched a zillion videos of life in Chapala, Ajijic, and San Miguel de Allende, but I've never seen an image of a policeman walking along the streets or down the Malacom. Well, uh, I don't know why. I mean, we don't have, like, beat cops that walk around the neighborhood because we don't have blocks with sidewalks around them, kind of like in the big city, like um, the United States. But we do have cops, and they do patrol on foot occasionally. They direct traffic on foot. In one of my videos the other day, you saw a cop stopping a guy with a, a funny-looking car talking to him. So I don't know why you haven't seen that in videos. Maybe. It's so common that people don't waste their time taking a picture of a policeman walking along the street. Oh, maybe they're at the donut shop. <laughs> maybe they're at the donut shop. Are there donut shops? Yes, there are donut shops. We have one right here in Ahihi called Doña's Donuts. And um, uh, they're very good donuts. I would say they're like uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, if you want Krispy Kremes, you have to go to the airport. Guadalajara International has a Krispy Kremes shop right there in the terminal. Uh, where can I get my car? <laughs> where can I get my car washed or an oil change? You can get your car washed anywhere you park. There are always people who are wanting to wash your car, no matter where you go. If you go to the grocery store, you go to Walmart, you just park at the pharmacy. There are always people there with a bucket and a rag wanting to wash your car, and it costs like, oh, 40 or 50 pesos. Uh, an oil change. Oh, there's also a, one of those kind of car washes up here on the Libramento where you drive through and the big brushes do your car, and then they hand wipe it down. I don't know how much that costs, so I don't do it. Um, oh, and where do you get your oil change? There are lots of places to get your oil changed in your car. Uh, does all life center on Walmart for these things? No. I lived here for 10 years before there was a Walmart and we weren't lacking for any of those things. Uh, there's lots of little shops and lots of little grocery stores and hole-in-the-wall bakeries and anything you can get at Walmart you can get somewhere else. Um, I just figured out the problem. Um, 
Is there a hardware store if home repairs are needed? Uh, let me just count for a second. There are seven hardware stores on the main highway in Ahihik, and that's in the course of three quarters of a mile. So yes, there are hardware stores. Um, if you want to do, if you want to go to a big box hardware store, you have to go to Guadalajara. So there's a Home Depot about 35 miles from Ahihik. It would be nice to get a fresh view of life in Mexico for an expat. Well, I hope that listening to me is your fresh view. Thanks again for sharing with us. Hey, like I said, I really enjoy answering comments and um, keep them coming. It's enjoyable for me and I hope that it's um, some value for you. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.